Morning everybody, this is Juan Martinez. I'm here, I'm here with Wes and uh, we're documenting this uh, video. Uh, but this is, a, I guess we could call it part two. We're still in Chular. This here is Chular Canyon. Beautiful place. Uh, we grew up here when we were kids. Our, our uh, native tribe, the uh, Olivas tribe, supposedly was up in the canyon here. Uh, Johnson's had it for a long time. My dad grew up knowing these people, so we, we always had access up here for hunting and stuff back in the 50s and 60s. <clears throat> Where I'm standing at here was an old schoolhouse. We got the creek here. I'm not sure what the creek's name is, and we'll have to do a little research on that. But uh, this whole area here, and I, maybe the schoolhouse was back here by, by a little meadow there. But this is the general area of that schoolhouse. And I have pictures of our family sitting here with my grandfather from the Mexican Revolution, uh, sitting here underneath these pines, and uh, we were uh, having a watermelon. So the car would be parked this way, and we'd be parked, and there'd be different people. We were not the only ones, you know, but different people would come out here. It was very rural then. Uh, as we go up the hill, we're going to see a few more interesting places, and we might make a stop there. So uh, we'll continue up the Chular Canyon Road. Good morning, everybody. Uh, it's about a little after 9. Uh, we're here at Cesar Chavez Park in Salinas. Um, we drove over here to give you a little bit of history. Uh, back in uh, 1974, 75, a guy named uh, Chris Padilla, Crescencio Padilla from uh, LULAC, and he worked with CRLA at the time, and uh, he was very much involved, and he made us aware of a thing called the block grant money that was coming to Salinas. And this block grant money was supposed to be used to help revitalize worn down communities such as Hebron Heights right behind us here. Uh, matter of fact, let's, let's turn around this way and you can see the housing that's there now. But back on this side, uh, we have Hebron Heights and stuff. So uh, a lot of the, the folks that I was involved with, I was involved with the youth program, Monterey County Youth Program. And we, uh, we had an opportunity to, to put our input into the need for the, uh, for this money. So we signed up as, as youth groups and stuff, car clubs, new arrivals and crusaders, other folks got, got involved and uh, signed up and said, yeah, well, we think Salinas could use this block grant money. So the money came in, $5 million. Then all of a sudden the, the city manager, Christopherson, decides they're gonna use that money for infrastructure to um, uh, towards uh, Santa Rita, between uh, Alvin, Alvin and Maine. All the way to Santa Rita was going to be infrastructure, new road, four lanes, all that. And we were trying to figure out, well, why? There's no housing out there. We got ranches, we got uh, broccoli growing out there and stuff. Hmm. Well, we found out that it was to entice uh, developers into building out uh, the, the, the distance between Alvin and Santa Rita. So what happened uh, to get the Northridge Shopping Center and all the shopping centers we see now, um, those investors would put the money down to do that if the uh, roadways and uh, infrastructure was in place already so that they didn't have to pay for it. So that was our money. That was $5 million that was invested there that they got from our block grant money. So we put up a fight and uh, we decided we're going to stand between the $5 million and the city of Salinas uh, because they lied to us, they used us, and they used uh, the community behind us, the poor people, uh, to get the money, and then they used it for their own personal needs. And saying that the taxes that would come from the investment would offset the five million on this side, which is true in the long run, but then they always find a way to use that money on some other project. Here it was designated for this particular project, and now it's being used somewhere else. So we're successful in, in getting the city to agree that, oh, it's not a, a good thing to do. And uh, they decided they're going to have an elections to decide a community board of sort to be uh, the governing board for the five million dollars. So they had elections of four different parts of town, and uh, we won nine out of 11 seats. And that's where I got to meet a lot of good people, and I worked with people uh, uh, that were on that committee and stuff, and we were able to reinvest. And Cesar Chavez Park was one of those projects. We bought the land here, and uh, we, we, we started uh, uh, um, Chispa Project. Uh, we gave them $380,000 and bought the first corner there at uh, Casa de Madera, the, the corner of Madera and Main Street. Uh, part of this idea of developing this whole area geographically was because we have a natural waterway behind us and now with the need of, you know, given the drought and stuff, we look at the park, look at the grass. I mean, we don't even have money to pay for the grass, okay? So uh, it's a uh, sad shape and, and uh, 
And uh, if we pan over this way, you see where we have agriculture. And we got dredge over here, uh, dredge for the neighborhood as well, and uh, dredge is very helpful in uh, helping us uh, create this uh, documentary. Uh, he's been supporting us all the way and continues to do so. Uh, homeboy here from uh, East Salinas, so that's great. Um, and we're talking about his history earlier today. Uh, behind me here, uh, getting back to this, we have uh, the, the uh, uh, broccoli fields and stuff, and then in the background you'll see the Salinas, uh, what the uh, Natividad Hospital's at, and up towards the corner of, Nat of uh, Natividad Road. So you see that lower extension there. Uh, you see some cars moving out, that's lower extension. And behind the berm on this side, a little bit more over here, you'll see uh, part of what would be, uh, you really can't see it, but it's headed towards uh, Veterans Memorial Park. And we're gonna be going that way to show you what other stuff we did with this block rat money in East Salinas and how we hopefully can use other resources to develop what's behind us here, known as Car Lake. It's another great uh, uh, water basin and it's uh, been drenched out consistently years ago what maybe 20 years ago now you see in salinas californian where uh filipino guy is fishing off of north main on that 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 gully that's out there that that, that drainage ditch leading out of car lake and he caught a steelhead right right next to the harley davidson and the pg e power plant you see those big power poles well you see it in the salinas californian 20 plus years ago uh, it was in the front page, so uh, so we know salmon and steelhead are coming up this way, and uh, it would be great to make that happen again. Plus, uh, it'll it'll uh, rejuvenate our water aquifers. We have a heck of a problem out here with saltwater intrusion, and this will be a, a big uh, help for that. So uh, anything we could do would be great. So uh, let's move on to the next site, and we'll see what we're doing. Ladies and gentlemen, here we are. At, uh, believe it or not downtown in the heart of Salinas, California. And as you look out this way, you see a number of, of uh, birds and ducks and uh, fish and stuff like that. A few people around fish. here. There's some, some litter uh, that, that's uh, becoming a problem. Right. Uh, this is part of that uh, block rat money that we invested in 30 years ago when the city of Salinas uh, applied for $5 million, and this was part of that project. Mm -hmm. This project actually extends all the way out beyond uh, Baranda Road. The idea is, uh, there's, there's a four or five pretty, uh, pretty large tripolis or uh, tripularies coming into this water basin, and they're coming in off of Highway 101, and those, those have been uh, uh, developed into, into canals and ditches along the highway. You'll find them along Griffin Road. You'll see where a lot of the homeless people live around there on both sides of it, along the highway, the base of the highway there. Uh, those all pour into Car Lake. Uh, and those are coming off the valley floor as it, down, as it drops down towards the coast. Uh, and... Uh, the other sources are coming off the, the Gabilanes right behind me here, uh, beyond the fog there. Uh, sooner there's a few, there's a duck there. Yeah, I know, I was just checking that out. Look at that, huh? All right, pretty coming cool. to get some feed or something. But this is a, the potential here is awesome. If we had a, a, a walkways along the edge of it, people would, would uh, admire the location a little differently. Maybe, maybe some decks where people can sit out and bring a, a few chairs. But the ambiance is beautiful. We need to give it more attention. We need to give it uh, uh, the, the respect it's due. Uh, this is actually feeding our water aquifer. Uh, it's making a lot of things possible. Up, up Creek, you know, a lot of, uh, a lot of irrigation, uh, excess water is pouring into here. And so there's a possible contaminants with pesticides, things like that. So it's a big uh, issue uh, either which way. And uh, it, this helps us become real conscious of it. If this were dry, they would still be spraying pesticides. They would never know about it. Now we could actually use this as a, as, a, as a canary sort of thing, right? So that the public can actually see the potential hazard of agriculture and maybe push for organic and maybe push for a buffer where there wouldn't be that drain coming into the... The, the, the watershed. Um, those are concerns for future generations. Our, our effort here is just to create a consciousness of the possibilities. What we see here 
is exactly what we're talking about throughout the Salinas Valley. We could create this, this atmosphere and, and create an ambiance where the communities come out and enjoy. If you look behind us here, you couldn't even see those apartments and housing. And all that is Acosta Plaza. Right behind us is Acosta Plaza. All those uh, nice uh, pink and kind of uh, tint uh, colored buildings is Acosta Plaza. And uh, it's great to have it here and it's, uh, we gotta create the access uh, so that people could take care of the place and uh, volunteer committees and things like that. Uh, it's a real civic uh, involvement issue and, and self pride. This effort has been going on for 30 years and will continue. And uh, right behind us here, adjacent to us, is uh, Vietnam Veterans Park and the uh, Monterey County Veterans Park. Uh, then we have the soccer fields and then Salinas Valley Memorial Hospital. So this whole strip belongs to us as taxpayers, you know, across the way, across the, uh, behind uh, uh, the camera there is uh, Car Lake and uh, Alvin Drive. Right near the side of Alvin Drive is Car Lake. That would soon be be flooded over and, and hopefully a, a water catch basin as well with a, a beautiful ambiance connecting to this place here and further up uh, up the canyon. That's where we're going to head now. So uh, we'll, we'll stop at this point and move on to the next location. There's no formal entry. It's a, it's a possible hazard for people trying to drive in here. Once they drive in here, they could be parking on dry grass and it start a fire. So uh, we need to pay attention to this area in particular. Uh, there's a roadway already here, as you can see, a dirt road. It's uh, Laurel Drive. Litter on the berm oh. there. This is on the top side. You see the flat line there. That's a Laurel extension. Uh, over here, you see a lady got off. Uh, she parked in here. You see, it's not very welcoming. Uh, look it. We got right. gates that are locked. Yep. And then right where she's at, the, the white car there, Right where that's at is uh, uh, a dirt, a dirt uh, exit onto this area geographically. You'll see where there's walkways. People are walking. It's a Sunday. Uh, there's signs over here. There's a uh, it talks nice about try. the uh, bobcats and animals and the whole area like that. So it introduces the ambiance that that we just experienced and uh, future growth in the area. And uh, hey, but listen. You gotta take the time to vote. That's what it's all about. This does not happen unless you get the community involved. And, you, and to do that, you gotta vote. You gotta vote, you gotta make these things happen. And uh, it's a great opportunity, simple to do. And uh, uh, loss control. Can you imagine an accident and this setup the way it is? There's no warning, there's no shoulder. You can't walk on the place. There's, there's people from me, Salinas, trying to get to the hospital. Uh, this is long overdue. So uh, let's take another look at this and then plan, out, plan it out for the future. Put a timeline to it and make it happen. And si se puede. Ladies and gentlemen, how are you doing today? So uh, we're, uh, let's say, uh, in one of the trip, uh, tribularies coming into uh, Car Lake. This one is uh, Natividad Creek. Uh, Gabilan will be over that way. So this will be Natividad. Gabilan's over to our right. So as, uh, as we're going to be following Natividad Creek up towards Old Stage Road and further on, right behind me is the development and the, uh, and the Alvarez High School. You see Alvarez High School and you see the housing and that, that intersection there. Uh, and uh, this creek leads right through it. You see those large trees there. It's a nice developed area, beautiful ambiance. People walk through there on, on the weekends and and they do the jogging and, and take a take a break. So as we look over this way, you can follow me here. You'll see the uh, the more natural setting uh, 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 of nature, and it keeps leading all the way up to the uh, El Gavilan, the Gavilanes, and the Fremont's Peak. Uh, so this is the creek here. Um, it's dry. You got dry bed there, but beautiful ambiance, large trees. Uh, I would I would love to see the county and the city get together and start developing a walkway with uh, possible weekend gathering areas for large like quinceaneras or something, uh, gatherings of community groups and stuff like that. Because a great way to enrich our environment, great way to educate our community and take advantage of what we have and not let it go to waste. Because uh, if people don't take if people aren't here, 
what, I, what we've noticed in a number of places, garbage starts to uh, gather. It could be the wind or just people driving by throwing things out, but it becomes a nuisance and, and that goes into our waterway, affects everybody and uh, there's a great uh, uh, over, over amount of abuse on that. Uh, I think most of us know that already and sad, sadly we take it onto the government and the government is responsible for that and it's really our responsibility as people. It's our community and to have it be a community we got to feel welcome here otherwise it's not ours so how can we take responsibility and feel proud when it's not when we feel like we're violating and any any possible reason could be reason for for uh, the police coming on to you and stuff and we got to have the right people elected and again I show you my shirt vote there it tells you get out and vote we're having some uh, great elections coming up in 2018 and 2020 the 50th anniversary of Earth Day. This is part of that project, Earth Day projects, you know, and uh, uh, our group that's pushing this is the Salinas Valley Water Protectors. So uh, we're moving forward up creek. So let's move on. Thank you. Trailway exercise. Ladies and gentlemen, here we are. I want to just show you what it looks like from the distance. That same creek, up creek. You can follow the trees. You got oaks and walnuts. You got you got uh, maple and, and uh, willows, a number of different variety of trees. Uh, you can even add, add more different kinds of trees as well. So uh, anyway, the creek keeps going up and a uh, great opportunity for a trail, walkway, exercise path, uh, environmental uh, experience, exposure to our community and our waterways, and the importance of picking up litter and taking care of our, our environment. I think this is the, the bigger outcome. but. People have to be in it to take pride in it, and uh, they got to feel welcome. And you know, I, we understand you got strawberries here and stuff, and you got a community across the road. So uh, let's take care of our water. Thank you. Yeah, here we are at the uh, San Juan Golf Course, and and this is a, a man-made, manicured ambiance, as uh, Wes was so clearly uh, ex uh, expressing it, and. Um, what we have here uh, uh, is the San Juan uh, Creek, and it keeps running through, or the uh, Nativity Creek, and it's running right on through, all the way down. And uh, well, it takes that further down, it gets into the community of, of uh, Salinas. Uh, you could pan over this way, and right over here we have uh, San Juan Great Road uh, and uh, Russell Road. And you see the palm trees over that way. That's where the shopping center would be at and eventually you end up in the Northridge Shopping Center in 101, just right off San Juan Great Road. So, so we're uh, actually up creek, and you see the valley, valley uh, watershed area here, where the creek is at. And it's, a, it's a beautiful ambiance, yeah, but then it go, uh, again, it's been altered quite a bit. Uh, a lot of trees may be pulled out and, and knocked down. Um, but uh, a lot of, uh, we've noticed a lot of older oak trees are still here, and those are thousands of years old. Thousands, literally, the, going back to the time of Jesus. So uh, those oak trees have been around a long time. Um, but we're gonna be uh, moving on towards uh, uh, further downstream from the Car Lake area, and uh, the, 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 the waterways that lead us over towards uh, uh, Marina, and then uh, the Salinas River, uh, and the uh, Espinosa Lake. So we'll see if we can catch that. So we're headed that way now. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Uh, it's about 10.45 uh, Sunday morning, uh, July 22nd, I believe it is. And uh, here we are from the uh, North Monterey County High uh, School. And uh, great school, you know, they got some good students here and great teachers. Uh, great, great sport history as well, athletic-wise. And uh, we're here today because on, the, on one, one side of it here, we have a great opportunity for a community project. And we're going to show you how that can fit into the environment and opportunities for students in the community and a future development uh, in terms of uh, environment and uh, water control. So uh, we're going to move on down the, the walkway and we'll get some more stuff. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we walked uh, maybe about 50 feet uh, down slope and uh, headed over to the watershed area here. 
if you pan over to your left, right along the, the property line of the school, you, uh, you, you'll see where it starts to drop down into a, a slough type uh, environment. And, and you see the nature's way of doing things down, down at the bottom here. Uh, over to our right, you'll see where it continues uh, over, over towards, uh, towards the coast. So that's headed over towards the coast. We're not sure where it ends up yet, but we're walking in that direction and see what we get. Come on down. Ladies and gentlemen, we moved down another 50, 50 or so feet. Let's give you a view from this side. We got a, a pine tree that's growing here. We got a pine tree. We got some, some uh, wild natural bushes here. We got some uh, uh, native uh, licorice as well. A lot of willow. You know, licorice is great, especially uh, the fresh, the fresher one. Um, but you get, the, you get an idea of how the wind blows through here. You see the swamp area there. You see all the all the tule grass growing out of there. So to have tule, you got to have a lot of moisture. The moisture still continues, and here we are at, uh, over uh, uh, towards the end of uh, July already. So it's been a while since we had moisture here, but yet those guys are flourishing quite well. So we're going to move on down and uh, take a look at the uh, near uh, view of what we have here. Ladies, here we are again. Ladies and gentlemen, here we are again. And uh, you know, you just saw what this uh, looks like in terms of the potential that's behind us here. We have a great slough, great holding tank for uh, we uh, for we uh, reclamation. It's a great opportunity as a re uh, retention for uh, rejuvenation of our water aquifers fight back water intrusion. As you look around the garbage, we see a lot of garbage around the area. You know, the high school is right here behind us. We have a great project for students to get encouraged to take care of their, 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 their community, their, their waterway, their water aquifer, future community project, great park. It's gonna be a central, uh, central area for uh, Overnight stay for people that are coming into the peninsula. It's right off the highway. If you look at way in the beyond, you see the road, the traffic. That's where the highway's at. They can come off that highway, find a place to stay, help pay for itself, and uh, help uh, with, with the congestion in Monterey because a lot of people are looking for a place to spend the night and they have motor vehicles and such. This would be a great opportunity for such an uh, for a thing like that weekend uh, overnight stay, you know. Uh, you look over on the other side of the road here. We have a whole bunch of ducks oh, ducklings on this side. The geese? Uh, no, these are ducks. Ducks. Those, those are mallards. Mallards there. So it's not too terribly contaminated, I guess. Yeah, let's walk across. That way, that way we can get a better shot. I'm watching them scatter. Watch them scatter. No, well, we're gonna go over there. Go over here to the right, dude. Over here to the right. Don't scare the birds. Don't be dumb. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, now we just crossed the road. We're on the other side of the, of the slough. The slough was divided uh, because of this road here. So you see the waterway going out, heading out towards the power plant. Uh, in the far distance, in the far distance there, we have uh, Marina and the power plant. You see the twin towers, the twin towers in the background there, and uh, again more more litter along the roadway. Look over here, some of our natural environment. And we got ducks on this side, so you know there's probably ducklings ducklings developing as we as we speak now. So we should be so a great opportunity more. for a, for a holy retention for our water aquifers, and this is one example of many, many, many along uh, uh, this geographic area. On the way from Salinas to here, I, I could probably name you about ten locations similar to this, uh, with great possibility. 
but uh, we're not taking advantage of what we have. And we need to work on it more. The land's uh, sitting there, no, no one's working it. And if we could help our water aquifer in the future generations, uh, that's what that's what got to be considered. We don't have much of a choice on that one, so uh, it's do or die, actually. So let's move on to other locations. That's a beautiful uh, Monterey uh, cypress here. Throughout the whole environment, along the river, in the back there, you see the frame of the uh, railroad tracks. Uh, railroad tracks also have a bridge there, taking it over across the uh, Smith River, and some huge. Uh, Monterey, Monterey uh, pine there that, that fell over recent, still alive. But you could tell a lot of uh, a lot of uh, ivy uh, ice plant has grown on it, so it must have been there for a while now. But we're gonna, we're gonna keep walking through, and uh, it looks like there's a little housing set up here. You see people are hanging stuff up on the up off the bridge and things, so maybe it's a little home set up. So uh, we're just gonna keep walking down this one. Folks, so here we are. We're at the base of the uh, Salinas River, uh, uh, under the highway, uh, Highway One. Behind me here, you got the railroad tracks, and it's got its own bridge there as well. So uh, the road there, more than likely, that 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 the river road there, we call it there, uh, more than likely, that's more of a service road for the uh, county and state vehicles to get through here, more than anything else. Uh, but yeah, this is uh, this is the mouth of it. Right beyond here, west, if you can step this way, as it rises, you can catch the river there. You can see the water. A little bit. Yeah, I think I might have to join you. This way. Yeah, it is. Uh, right behind me here is uh, what we call upstream. So this takes you up towards King City. As uh, a documentary here has shown that uh, constant water has been flowing through the Salinas Valley for at least three weeks now that I know, and, 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 and obviously a lot more. Uh, but this is uh, what we have. What a beautiful place, huh? The potential of this place is obviously uh, beyond. Uh, well, we could explain here today, but you know, anybody viewing it, if you're an artist, you got potential mural project here with uh, beautifying these, the great structure that we have here. Uh, this is holding up Highway 1, northbound and southbound traffic. What we see in the, in the distance is the southbound. This is right here nearest uh, we have here is the northbound. So northbound, then the, then the southbound. Headed towards Monterey. Headed towards Watsonville, Carmel, I mean, uh, Castroville, Santa Cruz, that way. So, we'll take a walk over this way. If we look over here, you see how open the area is and the accessibility. It's a, a nice ambiance here. All this area here gets flooded during the winter uh, rains. It, it goes up quite a bit. Uh, they've been claiming that we have a lot of uh, uh, obstructions along the Salinas River and they got to get cleaned up. Um, but yeah, we got uh, a real challenger, you know. Hey Walmart, this is that one uh, shopping cart you've been missing. It's right here. Found it. Come pick it up. Ladies and gentlemen, here we are underneath the, uh, this will be the northbound highway overpass. And uh, right across these great uh, flowers here. And, beautiful little patch we have. This is nature at its finest. This is just beautiful. I think we could do this along the Salinas River in different places and have a, a great opportunity to, to make possible what's available to us in our environment. We have water, we got the locations. It's just a matter of the will, the people. Yeah, but somebody obviously threw, or something happened, but a lot of the stuff floated downstream, ended up down here. So uh, we're gonna walk a little bit further down uh, towards the coast, uh, or as we say, downstream, and see where that takes us. Well, here's a good example, Wes. Take a look in the, in the far side embankment on the, on the river levee, a wall there. You'll see uh, somebody, artists, local artists, have already attacked that wall 
and uh, put a few murals up there. Uh, being creative colors and stuff uh, looks quite nice. If the rest of them here were touched up a bit, you know, with with decoration and stuff up high, maybe uh, this could be quite a quite an attractive place for for tourists for for a summer stay, you know, the weekends and that sort of thing. Um, a great project, maybe for homeless folks. You know, uh, they can be down in here. In that great environment. Community's not far away. They can maintain the place, put in community hours, and clean the place up, maintain it, go go downstream, upstream, and uh, do their nature project out of here and not in their keep. I think that's important. I think uh, everybody has value in this in this world. And sadly, when people are not employed or don't have a, a roof over their head. Uh, they tend to be looked upon as just excess, uh, excess, and uh, that. Uh, what can I say about that? And it's not good. Oh, that's that's dumb. That's the shingle. Ladies and gentlemen, here we are underneath the, uh, this will be the, the railroad tracks. Uh, old road off Highway 1. Highway 1 north and south oh, yeah. uh, will be to my left, the two overpass. This is the older bridge and the older road up on top. Underneath here is our challenges that we have throughout the entire Salinas Water Basin. We've seen this over and over from Greenfield, Royal Seco, Soledad, Gonzalez, it didn't matter where we went, this was the situation. Uh, neglected areas that have become abused by people that are just traveling through. And so, where the shingles come from. And you got everybody taking advantage. We've seen it in Gonzales along the levee there. Uh, garbage being thrown over. We saw it in Solida. We saw it here in Salinas. The, the, the roofing uh, example back in here. So you can't always blame the homeless folks, but yet, we have a lot of human potential with the, with the community, that particular community. If they seek out places like this, let's put out some garbage cans for them. Let's do something that alleviates the problem. But we're not participating well, in resolving it. We're just criticizing, and I think that we got to step up, uh, make these a little parkways area so that there's toilets and things like that, and have the, uh, the tourists and folks in our community take advantage of what they have in their neighborhood uh, and respect the waterways or anything else uh, know and learn about it. If they're uh, alien to it, they don't really care about it, and I think that's our biggest problem. You all expect the faucet to take care of everything. You want a waterfall, you put it in the backyard, right? So, uh, in reality, this is our reality. We're messing it up, we're messing it up quite well, quite fast. And the more population we have, the worse it gets. So, uh, let's get real about the problem and, and start dealing with it, it's easy. It's no big, big deal. Uh, but let's move on over towards uh, the, the mouth of the Salinas River. Uh, we're close now, a couple of miles maybe at the most. Well, a mile from the actual ocean. But if you go down, it'd be about a mile and a half for us to get there. So we're going to hit that one. Come on down. Ladies and gentlemen, hey, check this out. Here we are at the mouth of the Salinas River. It's a national wildlife reserve. This leads the water and environmental uh, concerns right into the sanctuary, the Monterey Bay Sanctuary which goes all the way down past Santa Barbara area and up towards San Francisco and and uh, in that area there. So what we have here is a, uh, a little background on the area, the development of it and what's, what's available here, number of trails and things. This is great. This kind of project could take place throughout the Salinas Water Basin. So using this as a small example, this can take place elsewhere. And I can tell the people have brought in stuff and are leaving it here or took it off the trail and brought it here. But if you look around, there's no garbage cans. So again, the garbage cans are important. Uh, you can't blame people all the time, you know, but uh, this is a situation that we've been facing throughout the entire water basin. And as you know, there's a lot of lakes and stuff out there in the Pacific Ocean now. Uh, not lakes, but uh, islands of, of plastic and the fish are being caught with plastic inside their intestines already. So these are real serious issues. And uh, this is a one way to, to bring it to light. But these are projects that we want to encourage people to get involved in their communities so that they become knowledgeable about the environment and the consequences of not taking care of it. 
So uh, we're going to take a, find an effort to get over to the, the mouth of the, the river. As uh, we recorded earlier, you know, the water's been running now for a while. We, we recorded it uh, throughout our, our, our documentary here. So we're going to see where the water actually pours out at. And I think you'll be in, uh, quite excited to see that. Uh, I hadn't seen that in a while. So salinas has been in a drought for a long time. So it's a, it's a special site. So let's get on over there. I think it'll be great. Come on. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we're walking up on the uh, river uh, trail uh, leading to the mouth of the river and we've come across a location here. You got some great pictures, I tell you. You know, there's some, some mallards and other variety of birds here uh, that come frequent the place. Canadian geese, uh, northern uh, pine tail, uh, northern uh, sloveler, and green winded tail. And yeah, these are some beautiful birds. Um, here's a map. So we're headed out this way if we can get there. We're right in here somewhere. We're right at this corner. And now we're gonna walk down towards the, uh, along the river there. So come along. Let's see where let's see where that takes us. It's got potential to be a toilet area. Smell like one? Smell. Does it smell like one? No, but there's no, no plumbing I ain't area. Or anything like that. There's no plumbing area, but there's two doors, male, female, I would think. And then uh, you bring in some plumbing, you get yourself a toilet out here. What? All right, so just a central. Oh, and there's baby, or is that just wind? What the fuck was this thing? Dude, there's birds in here. Oh. Check it out. Check it out, little baby chicks. Oh, really? How about bats? Yep, there's little baby chicks in that one. Poked his head out. Chirp, chirp, chirp. Chirp, chirp. Oh yeah. Right. Yeah, lots of swallows in here, dude. There's swallows everywhere, dude. Swallows. They're, they're gonna take care of the kids. Yeah, right. Careful. Yeah, all right. No, it's just cool in here. How you doing folks? Uh, here we are at the Salinas River. Uh, right prior to it uh, uh, emptying out into the uh, Monterey Bay Sanctuary. The behind us here, you know, you see some of the environment there? You know, there's a airport nearby. There goes one. Number of birds. There's got some mallards here as well. So it's uh, it's quite an area. Uh, you see an island out here. We have an island out here. Water's on both sides, going all the way out towards the ocean. As you notice the width of it, that that means basically that it's starting to widen up because it's starting to push against the ocean, which is back backlogging this water, which uh, it creates this wider look. And you see that all the way upstream, you know, that's natural. It's just what happens. But uh, we're going to keep walking down and, and see what else we find. It's quite an exciting. We're, we are at the corner where you follow the trail from the parking lot. There's a corner, and then you hit the river, which is where we're at. Now we're going to go downstream, follow the, the, the current, and, uh, and see if we get out to the ocean area. Come along. Ladies and gentlemen, here's another little outbreak out here. We had an opportunity to walk through the trees and the, the outer brush and stuff. Uh, people have been uh, chipping away at some of the trees. Got some fresh cut limbs and things here. Some of the dry stuff is still here. But again, we're starting to notice uh, that uh, it's litter, you know? And uh, because there's no actual organized effort to keep it clean, I guess it just starts to add up. And sooner or later, they come by and pick it all up, right? Uh, so let's hope that that's the case. Uh, uh, sadly, in our part, we didn't bring any bags or anything. We could have filled up a few, but we'd be busy all day doing that. Uh, so here we are, folks. Uh, in the far distance there is uh, Castroville and, and towards the, the, the peninsula up, up, up river. And from this side west, if you get on this side, you get a great view of Fremont's Peak. You know, uh, Spaniards must have loved this place when they followed the river, got to this point and said, wow. You know, what else could they see? Wow. Well, we have a lot of wire. I've noticed more and more wire around trees at the base. And that, I'm, I'm assuming, could be because of beavers and natural predators that probably would want to munch on the tree, knock it down so they could build their their little ha uh, cabins and stuff, you know, for the beavers. That, that could be a possibility. But we're seeing that more and more. I see four or five already. So we'll see if we catch it, but uh, uh, these are all willows. So let's move on down. As, as the upstream starts to dry up, everybody, the population moves towards the water, right? The water population, the birds, the fish, the bugs, everything moves 
in the direction of their livelihood, right? So they follow. Now they're, they're abundant, more and more pile up in, in less and less of an environment, such as the human population, right? We have a situation there in LA. What, what, what's happening there? Millions and millions of people are drawing out of the natural environment from the Colorado River and the river basin to, to, to take care of uh, what, 13, 14 counties in, in, uh, in uh, uh, Southern California? They just want to develop more. Now they want to split the state in different pieces so they can get their access to water. I mean, that, that's what this is all about. It's a water war. It's a, it's a real issue. It's been going on for a while since mankind, obviously. So, uh, but this is serious and then we need to take care of our environment. This is part of the effort. In this documentary, to have this kind of conversation for people, Start to talk amongst each other. And what can we do? You know, uh, the, the populations out here are pretty naive to the situation. They're hoping the government takes care of the problem. They expect the government to take care of the problem. That's the other problem. You know, we are part of the problem because we are the government, and when most of us are pretty shut up, you know, and that's kind of sad. Maybe this document educates uh, future generations to go out and take out these river projects and and see what they can do with their uh, natural environment because uh, they are a part of it. Uh, they not like it or not. You know? so, uh, let's see what happens in the next 10, 20 years because that's really what it's about, the next generation and building them up now. And uh, in Gonzales, for example, we got a great project there in Chular, Soledad. You know, the kids in the future can say, how come we never done this? Well, parents never talked about it. Well, uh, hey, let's get to the table and talk about it. So here's a great view, uh, it kind of opened up, or, uh, we, we just walked through a lot of trees and stuff, but uh, it's pretty open, there's, a, there's a, the, the, the water, uh, the dunes in the distance. And there you see that big dune, sand dune, uh, that's a famous sand dune because you can see it off Highway 1, and everybody says, oh that's where the river uh, uh, empties out well the the river here actually when it back when the the ocean was higher it backed up a lot of sand that sand forced the water the salinas river water to go towards marina and it came out right there at the docks in the marina at the bottom of the the twin towers there right so that's where the uh, actual salinas river used to dump out at uh in Moss landing back uh, 100 years ago or so, if not more. But apparently, apparently now it pushed itself right through. And it does that every now and then. Carmel River, same thing. I seen that Carmel River run uh, when it got to the actual sand in the ocean, it ran north and then dumped into the river. So that tells me north, if the water had gone north, that's the lower side of the sand because the water would follow the path of least resistance 100% of the time. So uh, it's uh, pretty obvious that that's, that's what happened. And here we have the same thing. It probably dumps out lower towards, uh, towards the Twin Towers and out here at uh, uh, Espinosa Lake and stuff. But if you take a look across the, the river, you might notice a possible little uh, housing for, for uh, habitat uh, uh, animals here. That could be for, for uh, uh, maybe beavers and fish, bobcats, things like that. Could be housed in there. You could tell there's an opening, and you could tell that that that, that uh, uh, bamboo has been knocked down and built on top of each of itself. We Quite haven't found any on this side, but uh, we're on the on the high side and start to look underneath the levee. Well, we're gonna keep walking up. We're looking all this grass is laying down like this. Obviously this is because of the wind. The wind kind of blew down all this stuff here. But it's just unusual to see since everything else is standing up. It's kind of beautiful little bed. Right, the wind, the wind just drove it over. Yeah, sure looks that way. There's another snow egret all the way down. Ladies and gentlemen, how are you doing? We're uh, nearing the mouth of the Salinas River, 
and uh, found this buoy and ran across a great, uh, great scenic value here that we stopped to take a view of what we see here. So we see an island, that I say a tree, and you get all these birds on there. I'm not sure what they are, but this is crowded with birds. Uh, got an overcast day, and it looks like South Monterey County, that there's light or there's blue uh, yet up here. You gotta have a jacket. So it's a beautiful ambiance, depending on where you wanna go. Um, so we're gonna move a little bit upstream and see where we get, or downstream, see where we go. Uh, we don't got much to go because there's signs and stuff. We'll see what they say about uh, access. So uh, we're gonna move on. Thank you. Come on down. Ladies and gentlemen, how you doing? Uh, we're on our river walk, I guess you could call it here, uh, along the river Mount Salinas River. Ran across on the trail here, uh, ran across the Salinas River Water Life Corridor. And uh, this whole thing leads all the way up to uh, Nacimiento Dam. So, uh, got a great chart here. Did you see any of those kind of, did you see any of those animals? Well, like we saw, I'm not sure we saw any pelicans or any of these beautiful birds of blue. Obviously, we didn't see the fish. Plenty of mallards and uh, other type of aquatic birds uh, out there uh, that's loaded with them. A lot of natural environment. Look behind me here, you see that hill? That's a dune, a uh, famous dune off, off the highway. You look towards the, the river mouth, and that's where, on the, on the shoulder side, on this side, you might notice, uh, if you put my finger in the right place, where the sand is at. The sand on okay. the right, on the left side. And that's really where the river meets the ocean, that location. There. Oh, there, okay. Uh, yeah. Yep. So we're just coming in from walking that, that direction. We didn't make it all the way because somewhere back that way, there's a, a, there's a drop off. That drop off is all flooded out right now. So we don't want to be looking for the area to walk over. So we decided to head back and uh, call it a day. So uh, we'll see you at the next location. Come on down. Hey, how you doing, folks? I'm up on a berm here. Apparently, this berm is uh, for the water that must, must be backing up off the ocean and the river when it floods out. Because this thing is about three feet, three feet tall. And behind me here, we got some cement walls. I'm not sure what those cement walls were, but it could have been for a dock. So there must have been enough water here at the time. We have a dock out here. We do see a pond and lake area there, so it must have been pretty deep at a time. But throughout the years, must have uh, all the sand must have come into it and filled it in. But this is a marsh area now. Uh, yeah, but there's a lot of cement and stuff out here, big giant blocks. Uh, it would have took a lot of machinery to bring it here, unload it, or it was it was made here. So. Uh, that could be it. We do have the access road right here in front of us. So that must be the access road into this area. And it looks like it drops down to the right here, giving you access to that pond that you see in the distance. And right there is the ocean. The other side of those uh, dunes is the ocean. So we're that close. So we're going to move on down back to the parking lot. Ladies and gentlemen, how you doing? Uh, here we are. Main entrance to the Monterey Bay uh, Sanctuary and the uh, Marine Lab. Uh, we're going to be walking around, take a look at there, and see who we run into, and, uh, and then go out to the waterfront, take a look at that, and, uh, and see what we, we find folks as uh, cars out here this Sunday. Uh, not sure what activities might be happening. We'll go take a look and see what's going on inside. Ladies and gentlemen, here we have a little description of all those uh, uh, community organizations that are helping out. A number of universities, uh, UC, UC San Francisco, Sacramento, um, East Bay, uh, Stanislaus, Fresno, Monterey Bay, uh, Moss Landing Marine Lab, and U uh, and CSU San Jose. So we have a lot of local community colleges. Uh, I was on the Hardnell School Board myself. We voted to support this project after the Loma Prieta effort, and, and in coordination with them, we have our programs at locally. Local community colleges are also doing that. That's, that's the feeder uh, districts for the for the universities. Is out of those community colleges, so we support high schools to support our effort because at the end you end up with your uh, master's degree and hopefully you get to the university. 
But this is their effort and this is the, the building they came up with and over 6,000 square feet in the main uh, main floor. Uh, uh, equivalent 39 uh, acres of the facility site itself. Uh, here's a map uh, geographically showing you. Uh, the old Salinas River uh, uh, channel. It's right here. So it's running right in front of it. So we'll go take a look at that and see what that looks like at this end. Folks, uh, as we're walking around and uh, looking at signs and stuff, here we have one in particular. Uh, talks about the Salinas River and the Salu here. Salu uh, running in front of the uh, the uh, uh, laboratory here. So it's part of the, the our local history. Uh, the river fluctuates. Sometimes it runs straight into the ocean and there's enough push. Sometimes the ocean pushes back, forcing the water to go to the left or right of the otherwise would be the main entrance. But uh, obviously, for centuries, it's been coming out this way. Uh, we do have one of the deepest canyons in the northwestern hemisphere, right outside the Monterey Laboratory here. And it comes from uh, the, uh, uh, the Salou area. Uh, uh, Espinosa Lake and stuff like that and what, it, what I understood happened back in the day interior lakes like in uh, uh, San Joaquin Valley uh, when there was an earthquake it busted up the, uh, the hills that were maintaining that that lake it bored its way through uh, San, uh, San Juan Batista and through Watsonville etc working its way this way and it busted out the water is what it was created that flow into the ocean. The water coming in from the inner lakes of Fresno all the way to Bakersfield dumps into the ocean and bores out that big canyon. Now that's what I recall back in the day, and that was like 30, 40 years ago, of course, but uh, hey, never know what we find out. Let's go take a look and maybe there's an update. So ladies, come on in. Uh, we have the front doors open so we can get in there and take a look at what's inside. Oh, look at this. This is beautiful. Huh? Oh, beautiful. Look at this. Awesome. Look at this. Here we are, folks. Marine Laboratory, Saturday, July 22nd, 2018. up to them you see that and then as you look further up beyond on the beyond there you'll see Santa Cruz you can actually see some of the buildings along the coastline in Santa Cruz in the Aptos area over to your left there will be okay. uh, Watsonville all right okay well what do you want to talk about the water well what we want to talk about in terms of the water well here we are at the base of it and, and uh, Back over this way, there's a boat there. Okay, the the uh, that's not hard to get to try to move out of these houses. But it's a great opportunity. I think uh, uh, you know, I was hoping the wind would have went away, but fine, dude. Go ahead. Oh, uh, we were kind of hoping to, to be able to, to show the life of the river, the, the entire length of it, and uh, we've done that thus far. 
there's a lot more we could do, obviously. There's creeks, there's there's ravines, there's there's canals, there's channels, a lot of stuff out there that needs to be uh, looked at, uh, improved. So that's what we're hoping to do here. Um, with a great scenic view, I wish more people would take advantage of it, come out to the Monterey Marine Laboratory out here most likely. Uh, places for rent, you know, all the way. some people inside now are having a, having a, a shower or a birthday party for, for a young lady. So it's quite a, quite a place, uh, sponsored by local community colleges and, and taxpayers, of course. So um, we look forward to, to having it work for all of us and uh, create a hopefully a nice environmental project for all of us throughout the Salinas Valley. So we look forward to starting a relationship here. We'll see what happens. We'll have to contact them as soon as we can. Thank you very much. So here we have a nice little chart that explains what we were looking at viewing earlier. This is that bridge that you saw. This is the source of the Salinas River coming back up the up from uh, uh, Salinas Valley upstream. And it pours out this way. Here it's leading into uh, Monterey Bay where they have the boats and stuff there in Moss Landing near the, the towers, the, the uh, power towers there. Um, there's, a, there's the ocean, there's a river. So we're right here, a couple of feet away from this. So it's quite a, quite a scene, beautiful area. Encourage people to come down here and get to know what we have. Um, it's a great opportunity to learn about the environment. Well folks, here we are, Casterville. We're being, uh, this is off the, off the road here on the side trail. At the uh, uh, Moss Marine Landing Marine Sanctuary, Lab. Uh, Moss Landing Lab. Uh, behind Wes here, he's doing the filming. Behind Wes is the cemetery. I'm trying to show our respects there. Try not to light up this pipe of mine. And uh, thinking about Steinbeck. Well, we're look well. Yeah, sort of, kind of. Huh? With the pipe, that's true. Actually, we're thinking of my dad. But uh, he had a number of pipes. This is one of his pipes. And I'm proud to puff on it now and then. Um, Behind us here, we have a, 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 a natural preserve. Uh, over the hill here, you already saw the Salinas River. Uh, beyond that is the, is the ocean and the sanctuary. Uh, west, you might want to film around that way. You'll see the Salinas Valley and the, uh, towards uh, Carmel, Pacific Grove, and then you keep going down. Of course, you got the uh, Mont Toro and then the Salinas Valley headed towards Rio Seco. You can see from this mound, this is like a mound looking down, uh, we can see over uh, Espinosa Lake. Uh, back in there, you see the power lines. Right beyond those power lines is the lake. You see Black Hill Road, there's a car going through there now, a white car. It's in that, it's uh, right beyond that look, is it where the, the, the saloon and that sanctuary is at as well. There go a flock of seagulls. Behind us here, we have quite a scene with the seagulls. We're getting them there. They are. All right. So this is kind of like the end of the, the waterway and the journey this way. Uh, behind us, you get Castroville, you get everything, and there's a lot of uh, tributaries into the uh, Monterey uh, Sanctuary and our biggest concern is the quality of the water, the volume of water, and uh, the water aquifers. As uh, society grows and we feed the world, we have agriculture, we have uh, produce processing plants, and there's a lot of uh, use of natural resources such as water. In Gonzales, you know, uh, we're a small community, but uh, a huge amount of water is being spent out of there. Uh, great to be able to recycle that back into our Gonzales Salou. The salute can really uh, help percolate the water back into our water aquifers. We have situations like that throughout the valley, and that's what we're trying to show in this documentary, how we can all help each other, uh, ag and the communities work together to grow and to, uh, to make it a sustainable effort in, in all of our parts. Uh, our waste is a big problem. Our natural resources, the wind, uh, the air, something we can take advantage of for everybody. Uh, we have beautiful ambiance here, look at poppies, California poppies, you know, so uh, I am proud to be a residence area for generations, our family, and I uh, look forward to future generations helping take care of the place. And thanks to, to Wes and, and uh, uh, 
uh, folks out there that we've dealt with in different communities and uh, supported this project through Monterey Bay Community Power, through Salinas Valley uh, Water Protectors, uh, you know, Dred for helping with Wes and helping produce this documentary and the effort that it takes to get out here and commit the time. You know, we could be doing other things, but this is uh, actually more important. So uh, with that, salute. And uh, let's help take care of each other. God bless. Twin Towers. All right, so we set the film. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we are, Moss Landing. This is uh, what was known at once upon a time as Duke Energy. We call these guys the Twin Towers of Monterey County, and this empowers the entire. Uh, central coast of California. They get their oil and stuff right out of the coast. The ships come in and they unload their oil through a pipeline in the ocean, underground, feeding the system here. Uh, this is uh, the power source for our Central Coast Energy and uh, Duke Energy. So um, they have a lot of land here and big power lines and stuff. One goes down, it really uh, damages the environment, it damages the uh, economy, just that alone, the economy, everything shuts down, so uh, it gets pretty bad. Uh, so again, this is uh, Sunday, uh, July 22nd, and right now we're looking at about, uh, let's say, 1.30, and this is the main gate number two for employees only, and uh, since they close down and stuff, uh, that, that hasn't happened, so we're lucky we're not getting shy at, so we better get out of here. Thank you very much, let's move on down. How you do, folks? Uh, my name is Juan Martinez. We're in uh, uh, Moss Landing. This is the uh, Salou, Elkhorn Salou, uh, natural habitat area. Uh, you see great, great views from here. In, in this direction here, let's start with that, that area. Looking back towards the uh, Pajaro Valley and Watsonville. Um, that hill there is Mount Madonna, that peak. The top peak is Mount Madonna. Uh, at the bottom of that, you got to gonna have Watsonville, etc. Now, this waterway actually leads all the way back to the Pajaro River. We had the, that flood, I believe it was in '97. And the flood in '97, um, actually, the water was so backed up up to the ocean that in the valley was flooded out, you know, strawberries there flooded out, and, it, and the water worked its way along the railroad tracks over to the Sulu here into the ocean. And that's how much water was coming out of that, that, that Mount Madonna hillside and the Pajaro River coming from Hollister. So out the Hollister hills, the canyons, the community Hollister, that whole valley there, dumped its water in here, including Mount Madonna and, the, and that face on this side. And it dumped it all at one time and it, it flooded out this whole area. Salinas Valley got flooded as well. Uh, quite a scene. You see boats in the lot in the distance there. It must be like a little tourist boat, way out there. there Great place for uh, kay kayaks and canoes, uh, scenic areas. Uh, you know, this is a, a saltwater uh, slough, saltwater. So whatever's in there is going to saltwater type uh, animals and creatures. Uh, and yeah, we can make something like this. Uh, uh, I guess what you call uh, fresh water, uh, uh, sweet water, you know, uh, non-salt water um, throughout the Salinas Valley. And uh, it's just a benefit for all of us. I mean, we, we need to show this whole video so people get a view of what's happening upstream and what's happening here at the face of the ocean and the waterways so that we can get a full picture of what, what's available to us, how we can uh, uh, project what we can do, its limitations, its... its uh, motivations that it has for us as individuals, as a community, uh, generational stuff as well. Older people can come and relax and enjoy the ambiance. Young people can be doing active community service work. Uh, taxpayer base will go up because who doesn't want to live around a community that's got rivers and creeks and, and, and nice trees and ambiance. And, you know, uh, so the, the price of homes will go up possibly, I'm sure. Um, but in Gonzales, uh, that project, it's really, I think, it's to save the community itself. We have five uh, companies that have come in, created a great economic base for everybody, of course, and help feed the world. On the flip side of that, we see 
and they're sucking up a whole lot of water. Never before have we had that kind of water sucked out of our water rocker for St. Gonzalez. So then the question becomes profitable for people, and of course that's our issue here. So uh, obviously we're on the people side of the thing in here, and uh, we don't want people to lose their jobs, number one. Number two, we don't want a contaminated environment because of uh, chasing down money and just to pay the rent of a toxic water, you know? That doesn't make sense at all. So if water comes first, numero uno, you know? Uh, we need Wachoni. Agua es la vida, and water is life. And that's what this documentary is about. So, do or die, actually. That's, that's what it comes down to. There's no fooling around on that. It's a, it's a lifetime adventure, lifetime cause, um, and it's the thing we have to do. It's not a choice. It's the thing we have to do. Ooh. You want to record the marker? Uh, okay. That's an interesting piece. Uh, what was it say? Uh, dimensional survey control point. Three dimensional. Survey and engineering do not disturb. Elk one year. Ladies and gentlemen, I invite you to come on down to the Elkhorn Saloon Sanctuary, our natural reserve, preserve here, and uh, see the waterways going every which way. Uh, quite a place. In the wintertime, it gets really full of water. Uh, we got a, uh, an island out here. It's got a couple of bridges leading out to this island. And then the water leads us out back towards uh, Las Lomas. So we've been involved with this video and we got to this point and we do like to just kind of end this video with a quick uh, statement. Uh, Mini Wachoni. Agua es la vida. Water is life. Whether we like it or not, this is something we've got to deal with and it's a real serious matter. And no one's going to do it but us. The corporations have got their interest and if we don't fight for our own, who's going to do it? It's not going to happen. So uh, we really hope the community gets involved and uh, Appreciate what we have around us. Take care of what we have and increase it. Make it better than what it is. So God bless you and uh, we hope to see you at the next meeting. God bless.